what is this guy talking about? This car is a beginner car? Well, actually it isn't, but let me explain. You don't have to watch this video to figure out what is the best beginner car, but you're struggling, so you're searching another video on the subject. So I came up with a new philosophy, let's say a new way to look at this from like a different perspective. Let's get into it. The whole goal of picking a beginner car in this game is that it should be an easy car, easy to handle, and have some decent pace. Now, you can take the Aston Martin, you can take the BMW, you can take a front engine car, and all is good and done. And we don't have to speak with this subject anymore. We can just drop it, just go ride that cars. But there's a problem here. As of everything in this life, if we get into like a nice comfort zone and we are like really familiar with it all, we actually don't grow and we're not evolving and progressing. So I would say, imagine the next scenario. You're driving Aston Martin, safe car with the current BOP on LFM, actually really fast as well. So like, why would you ever change? If you want to challenge yourself, Let's say you pick that Porsche, you have weird moments of understeer, and then you could say, oh, the Aston doesn't have this weird problem. And then when you're entering certain corners, you feel the back all of a sudden starts sliding. Maybe you're gonna have tire wear issues. Maybe the, f the weight transfer of the car changes when the tank goes empty. You have a lot of problems. Now, the absolute freaking secret in all of this is that the best sim racers and racers in real life I, I've seen some documentaries okay I, I, I know kinda I feel like what I'm talking about so we're thinking adaptability being able to adapt in sim racing in all the sims is a massive skill and you can learn this from different cars if you let's say drive the Porsche and you get into that fast corner that you need to break a little bit and the rear starts sliding, you'll be prepared for this. You will learn skills to make sure that doesn't snap on you, you know? And same goes for like throttle behavior in an Audi. When you like too much on the throttle in the Audi with low traction control, you know, these, all these things you can actually pick up and it forces you into another driving style which you then later can like construct together again in a car that you really like. Now, does that mean we always need to be in this difficult, weird cars? Absolutely not. And if you really get frustrated, you should stop at some point and try later again. What I am not saying is get into a Porsche that you've never driven before, go into a race, get into a spin, and take the half the field out. That is not what I'm saying. I'm talking practice session here, okay? Hey, and if you're liking this content, please hit that like button, guys. That really helps me out. Thanks for doing that. Now, I will start talking about a few cars that I've driven quite a lot, where I actually learned some skills from. So I will explain, like, this car, this is maybe a skill you can learn from this one, and like so on yeah you know what i mean yeah okay let's go talking the newest audi this car is bruh. just as throttle control if you just put the traction control up and up and up it gets really 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 slow so it forces you to push like a low traction control value and it really forces you to be gently on the throttle when you're exiting the corner because if you don't do it you get an oversteer situation you lose lap time and you'll just be slow so this is what I actually learned from this car. I actually really appreciate it, but it got just slaughtered on LFM, that BOP, so it's a shame, but it is what it is. Porsche 992. Well, this car is a handful, especially on corner entry and trying to trail brake. Uh, I can only imagine if there's like a, like a Monza and you need to take the wing off, this problem gets probably more exaggerated. So this skill you can learn from the Porsche is actually keeping control, keeping that rear in check, which is a massive skill. Imagine if you're driving your safe car, your Aston Martin, BMW, or maybe a Lambo, I don't know, and you got like bumped into the back and you got a little bit of a damage. So now your car is a little bit oversteery everywhere, especially let's say on entry. Having some laps under your belt in the Porsche could really learn you this skill. And it's awesome to have. Let's talk the Mercedes a little bit. 
I wasn't driving this car a whole lot, but I was testing out a little bit with it and it actually forced me to change the setup quite a bit. And so you get like, get rake in the car, but then you get rid of understeer, but then it gets oversteery at times and it kind of forces you to get to be a better driver in it. Same with that Porsche stuff like oversteering on entry on like faster corners being ca more careful with your steering inputs in the fast corners really forces you to do this with this car compared to like say bmw or maybe Aston martin let's say the ferrari 296 and maybe the 488 now that i actually have no clue how to drive so maybe for me that is a solid choice and as far as goes the 296 it's really hard on curbs, so if you're really relying on curbs all the time, maybe a 296 would be your next pick to challenge yourself finding different lines and be fast like that, instead of eating all the curbs all the time. Now I still need to talk about the uh, McLaren 720S. The massive struggle that I have with that car is the same like a little bit as the Audi, it just steps out on the back a little bit. And if I tune everything out so that doesn't happen anymore, I have like an understeery car. So maybe that, that is a skill that I've also learned. Now, now there is still a massive car list that I did not speak about, but I just don't feel qualified to say, oh, you're gonna learn this and that from the Honda and you're gonna learn this from the Lambo because I just don't know. Maybe you know. Let me know in the comments and let me know what you think about this video because we have all these car picks, fastest, not fastest, easiest to drive, whatever. But we actually want to learn skills, get faster and in my opinion, picking a difficult car sometimes just forces you to learn. So you can say I want to learn but this is gonna force you and that's the difference yeah and you're gonna learn next day you wake up the porsche is gonna be a bit easier or the honda is gonna be a bit easier and then the next day maybe a little bit better again and then if you go back to your same safe favorite car let me know if you increased your lap time maybe a little bit and it will be very hard to explain why but you could actually gain some skills from another car now if you are struggling on curbs, which some of you do, uh, maybe you don't feel like you do, but I've seen cars bouncing off curbs. Watch this other video next.